So today is April 13th. On April 15th, people are coming to install concrete in my stable. Or maybe they're coming to prep the ground for concrete. I don't know. The bottom line is I have today and tomorrow to get the asphalt out of my stable. And I've never done anything like this before. So I asked my wife to help me. And uh, I, I don't know. I just don't like being alone on a task like this. It's making me nervous. It's been in my head for weeks now. And today is the first day that I do it. So <sighs> wish me luck. Oh yeah, another thing. This phone, camera, it didn't charge last night. I have this wireless charging station thing and you know, I put it down, it makes a beep, but I always know, know that it's charging and I woke up today with a battery at 11%. So I'll be tethered to this thing for most of the day, but this thing is cool, so I should be okay. All right, the electricity for the ceiling is totally done. I think the last video you guys saw we put in this row right here. Well, you guys didn't see it, but I put in this row previously, all of those. And then the other day, off camera, my wife and I, you see the two scaffoldings down there, the yellow ladder looking things? We just took them, ran in parallel. She did this one, I did this one, and now the ceiling is ready for lights. I have the lights. They're all stacked up on the front porch, but I, I thought, with all the commotion of removing asphalt and maybe laying concrete, it would be better to keep all these like, you know, LED glass lighting fixtures off the ceiling until the construction is done. That was my thought. This tractor is not set up for removing asphalt. Um, I think I'm going to take the ratchet rake off the front here, that's the yellow thing, and have that available. I'm going to take this log splitter off the back because uh, it, it's like having a really big tail to wag around and I don't want that. And over here, I'll run for you. Let's see, not you. This is a counterweight. I may use that. When you have a lot of weight in the front bucket, the, the tractor wants to like do an endo or as a kid, we called him a Polish wheelie. Is that racist? I don't know. It's when your back tire goes up and uh, this ballast counterweight thing prevents that. And then somewhere around here, oh, here, over here. Running. This is a new front bucket I have. It's for digging holes. It's for, um, uh, mostly for digging holes. It, it is meant to be kind of a replacement for a backhoe. Backhoes are $7,000. This thing was like 600 something. So way cheaper. And if it can take the place of it, then, then it's a win. Anyway, it has these real aggressive teeth up front. I'm gonna put my hand on it for scale. Need a banana, right guys? So you can see like these giant teeth. Check out this bug. He's not moving. I think he's a dead bug. So, we'll use this bucket, my other bucket, the counterweight, and uh, we'll see how this goes. I've never done this before. I hope it don't look dumb. So far, nothing is going right. I think I'm gonna edit out, edit out a lot of the footage of me trying to hook up those implements, but 
<sighs> Everything's going wrong. My wife, who is my helper, second guessing everything, everything. And she means the best. She's like, hey, you know, I think this might break if you do what you plan. If I think this might break if you do what I plan. But she doesn't have alternatives. She just has like, like, I think you're going to screw up thoughts. But she means well. It's, I think a better way to phrase it would be, watch out for this. But she doesn't have any like solutions just watch out for this, watch out for that. Oh, well, what should I do exactly? Mm -hmm. Just something to look for. So, uh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to come from this side, which seems like the easier side, and we'll see how it goes. The challenge is that we're going to take out this piece of wood. I'll show you. Oh, here, let me switch the camera. There. So as it sits now, there's two problems. One is the obvious like ledge. Like, would you want to drive up that all the time? You know, of course you wouldn't. And you know, some things like our smaller mowers, sorry about the wind. Um, they, they, they can't. The other problem is this, I'll demonstrate. I guess normally when you work on a house or build it or whatever, you think of the garage doors in advance. And us being new at this, I, I don't know, I screwed up. And there's that gap there. You see this gap? Right? No good. Nobody wants that. It, it, it's if the wind is going to blow rain against this garage door, this will collect it like a bucket or whatever. So what we're going to do is put in concrete. When we put in the concrete, we'll do a form that, that makes this like kind of a ramp and it'll solve this problem. So step one is to pull that wood out. So let's give that a go. I hope I don't mess this up. Weird. I'm pretty surprised, but that's exactly what I meant to do. Good. All right, this is our first cut. I'm pretty far from the trailer, so I might switch sides, but let's see what happens.
Okay, since we last spoke, things have gone a lot better. Uh, here behind me, you can see uh, the asphalt that's removed from about here to the end. That's maybe 20, 30 feet. <sighs> I'm gonna start coming from this direction. I know the lighting is bad, but uh, if there's anything I learned, it's that it was nice to have this like a set width. So what I'm gonna try and do is make a crack from here to the door with a sledgehammer. Let's see how this goes. So, that was really successful. I mean, what, what do you think, honey? Very successful. I think you're just saying that. No, I, I, I had no idea how it would go. I thought, um, I thought there was a, so I've seen it done with skid steers and they make it look easy. But skid steers can pivot, like they, they're, they have tires or tank tracks and they can, you know, go right in, in place. Tractors have a really tight turning radius, like their, their wheels just turn sharper than cars. But um, I was still worried that, that that would be an issue, not being able to like pivot like that. And, uh, and I was worried it'd be light. This tractor weighs about 5,500 uh, with the front end loader and then about you know 6,500 really with the ballast on the back. But a skid steer weighs like 8,000. So... I thought maybe that would be an issue, but it really wasn't. It, it, it seemed like a good tool for the job. Here, show them what we did. Back up a little Actually, stay right there. So by your feet, right? This is out. And then we did to here, because this isn't asphalt. This is like hay and stuff. And then you guys, I guess, saw from here all the way to the end of the barn and out the other garage door. So we're just a little past halfway. And oh, come with me. I'll show them the trailer. If you need a good contractor in Raleigh, this is your guy. 
He builds entire houses and he fixes broken windows, top to bottom. He's got a couple houses in progress right now. Anyway, um, he's also my friend, so he let me use his trailer. Um, by doing this myself, I'm saving about 2000 but I bought that bucket on the front for six something, so you can decide whether or not I'm saving 1400 or 2000 The bucket will have value after this job. But anyway, so this is just full, a little past the top-ish. Um, and that's where we are. So I'm hoping that Adam Schroeder, the owner, uh, comes by, we dump the trailer and get some lunch. Oh yeah, there's a little more. There's stable progress you guys haven't seen. So I have all these bolts in across the top. See over here, the bolts were already there. These, these two by sixes, they sit under these, these bigger, like more important supports and they have bolts because as you put downward pressure on these things if they're just nails they can pry off but if there's bolts holding it uh then the pressure kind of sits right on that bolt and it's better so now these guys are all bolted up as they should be and there's another thing i'm probably more excited about that um i showed you guys that i got the power for upstairs see it says loft it's kind of old school i might end up putting this in here and putting on a three-way switch because Sometimes I go upstairs and realize I wish I had the lights, but I put the lights in. So now the top of the stable is dirty and you can see that, but it's lit. This thing here, I think it's called a sunshade. Some people call it a lid, a roof, but it's for the top of my tractor. And the reason it's not on there is my stable, the entrance to it is like one or one and a half inches too short. It'll bump the roof as I go through the door. So I wish I could have it, but I can't. And when we redo the floor, we're gonna be sure to lower it by that you know, inch or two so that I can drive the tractor inside. So I could probably do it right now with the asphalt gone, but anyway, so there's lights. These things here, they're LED lights, so they last like 20 years, supposedly. And they're only 30 bucks at Costco. I'm not a Costco member, so there was like a tiny little surcharge for me. But um, yeah, let's see, four of these, $120 for the whole upstairs. Uh, the downstairs, oh, I'm putting like 20 lights up. I only have 18 more, so I need to source the other two. But um, I'm gonna light up this downstairs like the sun because I have a strong preference for, for bright areas and uh, that's that's how I like it. Especially when doing any detailed work, like woodworking or office work or whatever. Um, if I'm watching TV, it doesn't need to be super bright, but if I'm you know trying to get something done, I really appreciate the lights, which is why there's so many outlets on the ceiling. We're gonna wire this thing, actually it's wired up, but we're gonna light this thing up. I'm waiting to do it until after the concrete because like, for example, you see me with my roll bar on there, you know, like, I don't know, what if I hit it with the roll bar? Or what if this thing, when I lift the asphalt, like flip something to the sky? And we're talking about a lot of glass on the ceiling. So just wait, I'll install the lights after the floor and that'll be awesome. But uh, man, things are happening. Somehow I thought you guys might be interested in this. I made this bed. Um, yeah, I made it a while ago. I, I used to have a footboard too that, that matched the headboard or footer, header, I don't know. Um, when I did it, I was in this phase where I was doing everything with hand tools. Like everything was done with little knives. You can see all these, I don't know if it'll pick up on, on YouTube, but like you see these marks, the little dots, this imperfection that kind of represents it was hand planed. Uh, there are people who think that those little imperfections make this... Uh, a pretty awesome piece of furniture. Uh, I tried to do it without imperfections. I'm just not a perfect person. Anyway, whatever. This is one of the things that I have made. She's struggling. She's giving her all she's got.
Adam was concerned about the weight. He says I put too much in. I didn't know any better. But it looks like it's going to be fine. I'll feel better when it starts getting lighter. There we go. We're home free now, baby. <laughs> yeah, he said, I think he's the same way. He said, we're home free now. Sorry about the bad camera work. I was trying to get in a better spot. Success. Oh, you turned it on? Okay. All right. So, this house stinks. Uh, this is the guest house. And Jackie did school with Colin this morning and said that it smelled terrible. It smelled like poop. And uh, now we think it kind of smells like dead animal. I don't know. So, my first thought was that the septic system was... Uh, releasing gases back into the house and if you don't know you know how under the sink the pipes make like a u-shape like it, it doesn't just go from the sink out it goes down up and back around that u is to trap water and what that trap does is it seals it so that the bad air can't come back into the house so the theory is that that water that would seal it and stop septic air from coming in here evaporated. And we don't have anything. We looked for dead animals. We didn't see anything. I even checked the attic. This little place has an attic. And uh, I guess we'll do that. I'm done. Come back and see if it still smells bad. All right. So we emptied the dump trailer. It's back there. Adam said, you can hardly see it in the background, that we filled it too much last time. It worked, but it, it didn't. It made him uncomfortable. So he would prefer it if instead of taking out all this asphalt, this like T-shape, in one go, we got about half of it now, then he'll empty the trailer and we'll get half the next time. Lucky me, I've got the whole team uh, on, on the case here. <laughs> and uh, we're trying to figure out what what to do and this area needs to be empty for the for the concrete to go in and we're trying to do it without moving it too many times i think we're going to take some of the scaffolding push it over there um this area just past the dogs we're not we're not putting cement here i might put some dirt here but but not cement so this will be a place where we can store things and then the second floor up there it is a place where we can store things. So, work to do. Hey, Colin. Uh, I think you want to, to do what? To get the golf cart and the gloves are in there. Oh, okay. All right. Oh, oh, Colin, you see these boxes? Yep. Put them in the fireplace. Okay. Or the no, fire sorry, pit. The fire pit. The fire pit, just to be clear. Okay. All right. I got, I got work to delegate and work to do.
All right, so we've made some progress. Uh, as you know, before we got all that stuff out, now over here where the mowers are, they're sitting on dirt too. Uh, let me flip the camera around, I'll show you more. Here's the trailer. A lot of stuff, but not as much as this morning, by request. The mats, oh nice job, honey. So we're putting some mats here. I think someday we might have rocks there, but right now we're doing mats because we need a spot for the mats and what else are you gonna do? Hello, Ender. So we're gonna unload these mats. What do you think, honey? Uh, we gotta unload these mats. <laughs> She's so tired. Oh. Onward. So. Oh, <laughs> what? I'm just trying to go fast for you. <laughs> so, uh. That concludes the stable portion of the day. Piece by piece, it's gonna be done. Oh. What's wrong? Oh, it's a trash cans? Yeah. Okay. Um, after the stable's done, pull stuff, which yeah. should be pretty cool. All right. Okay. In Apex, our trash service was amazing. Anything we put out there, they would take. We had, like, see these, the big can there? There's two cans, right? Ignore the metal one. We had two of those bigger ones and a recycling one. We could have thrown away like seven or eight dead bodies if we wanted to, and they would have taken them in Apex. Here, we got rejected on our first week. So when we have too much cardboard, it kind of accumulates and, you know, it just becomes time to sort of take care of business. <laughs> My chest is getting higher. <laughs> Colin just sprinted over to the stable and back. So, and he hasn't been like moving or running very much uh, because he hurt his foot. Most of you know about that. Anyway, Colin, don't get too close. One minute. He's tying a shoe right there. I'm gonna see if I can light this feel on the edge. Oh. Got it. All right. <laughs> okay, so soon the box. Oh, Colin has more boxes. He's done this before. See, he still limps a little bit. I'll stand still so you can see. I don't know if it's in his head or if it's in his foot, <laughs> but uh, I think he'll just walk it off. I mean, we talked about. Um, physical therapy and stuff with his doctor. He's like, give it a couple weeks. If you still think you need it, then, then you can do it then. So uh, we've got that in our back pocket. If he needs therapy, we'll do I've that. I've won it so fast. You ran so fast? Yeah. There's paper on the ground. Go ahead, handsome. Go get more bossit. If I'm honest with you, Part of the reason I burned so many is I, I like it. I got I like it. You got in trouble for what? I fall a duck walk. Oh. Yeah, it's not hard. <laughs> Colin threw a ball of dirt at Jackie and got in like big trouble. He got kicked out of the stable. He wasn't going to help us anymore. In his head, oh, it's a joke. It's fun. We're all in work clothes. It's going to break up. Or maybe in his head. I don't really consider how other people react to the things I do because be I'm on the autism spectrum. Do no, so. you're too hard on yourself. Um, anyway, Jackie yelled at him and he took it pretty hard because he does. Uh, I don't know. I'm going to love him up. Let's take the trash out. So, so He's going to show us how this thing works. All right, so this thing goes in the notch. He made a mistake. That's for taking it out. And then, you see how it has that bar on the front? He's going to wheel it over. And he usually gets it first try, but not every time. See, you put a guy on camera and he loses his neck. There it is. Bottom first. And then it hooks in. Colin, you film me. So. Here, hold this. Don't. What are you, what are you doing? Oh, no, you're doing it right. I'm crazy. Here, get this. So first, I'm gonna put this down. Pull this off a 
wall. Did I get it? Yeah. Got it. Yeah. All right. I have no idea how that camera work was. But there they are. They're hooked on. Now we'll tow them. Okay. A few seconds later, you can see this is how we take our trash out in the golf cart. So, a guy from EasyGo wrote me and uh, he was pretty excited that I'm pretty excited about my golf cart. I've had it for over a year now and I'm still jazz. Like every time I drive this thing, I, it's a pleasant experience. This thing just it never lets me down. And we do a lot of work in it. Like even today, this must be loud. I'll try to get closer. Even today, um, you know, Jackie was like, oh, I have to move those mats, you know, from inside the stable to outside get me my golf cart <laughs> um, it, it's part of the lawn maintenance it's part of all sorts of things we do um, heck hoping Colin got the mail today get in the mail get the golf cart so anyway my neighbor's watching me here can you can you see him so I feel sick I <laughs> you found a worm yeah he's white you know he's dead it's a dead worm, maybe. Yeah, Thanks, yeah, Colin. Wet. Just what I wanted. So, oh wait, I'll show you how to, uh, did you unhook it yet? Yep. Here. So now, you take this thing and you put it in the slot, like that. So yep. when he pushes it forward, go ahead, it'll like let it go. Go ahead, Colin. Like this, you pop like this. Perfect. So I almost forgot. In addition to the trash, I'm supposed to look at the guest house, lock it up, and uh, it's, no it's a little bouncy, and make sure that it doesn't smell anymore. Um, I'm not that confident in my fix, so we'll find out. Okay, I think I fixed it. I'm not exactly sure. It doesn't smell, at least not much or not that I can tell but the windows were open so we'll shut it up and see what we have tomorrow morning all right the boxes are gone maybe a little left they're kind of smoldering a touch Colin's got the poking stick yep my experience is when they smolder like that they just keep going and then there'll be ashes and nothing left soon enough this hot this fire on the bottom this fire on the bottom yeah. What's my poking stick? Oh, there it is. <laughs> Wrong poking stick. Wrong poking stick? Yep, I picked this. I like fires. Me too. Alright. No. Oh. This thing popped up on my screen. Um, sorry about that. Anyway, Woodycraft meeting. So, looking, is there anything private on my screen? <laughs> no, just Unixy stuff. Um, I met with two admins at Woodycraft for the last, I don't know, 45 minutes-ish to discuss our plans on Factions Reset and, I missed the table, I'm like, yeah, uh, Factions Reset and Kit PvP Resets, I think those are the next two things that we're sort of tossing around doing, and um, I don't know what else, uh, just Woodycraft stuff, work to do, always work to do, so, uh, yeah, I don't know, the day's, day's going, what time is it? It's nine right now. There's the clock. Colin's here. Meetings with Colin, like, I love him to death, but he gets so excited about stuff that, like, my staff will be talking to me, and they're completely reasonable and professional, and they say a thing, and I'm like, I'm so sorry. I know they heard him yelling. I heard him yelling, and I missed their message, and it makes me feel bad, but uh, I don't know. I... I on the other hand, I think they're really cool with it, even though like my internal standards are that uh, I should be better than this. But whatever, I really enjoy having him, so I don't know where I'm headed. Uh, nine o'clock, I guess my day is almost done. Every single day, I think about live streaming. I think yes. that I should, like Kyle, Taylor, and Chiz 
have been playing Age of Mythology, I think. And someone bought me the game. And it has a spectator mode, like Ch like uh, Civ, I mean to say. So I could theoretically just spectate, live stream, hang out with people while they play the game. And it would be like, I don't know, a party. We'd have a good time. And then, like, it just seems like every day there's a different excuse why I haven't done it. Um, oftentimes they start at like 11. These guys game, I don't know when they stop. Uh, I've been told they stop at 5 a.m. sometimes, which is really late. And that kind of sleep schedule doesn't, doesn't make me happy. But um, they kick off their sessions at like 11, 10, Whoa. 30, and midnight. And usually I'm just like, no, no. <laughs> you know, I, I don't want to like start gaming that late in my day. I'd, I'd rather uh, go to sleep and make tomorrow an awesome day then have a night but uh, one of these days I'm gonna do that so um, I'm doing these things more frequently it used to be I'd like edit a day in the life and then whatever put it up four days later but this one is gonna go up tomorrow so if you're watching this this all happened yesterday and I'm getting a lot more like current with these things so um, tomorrow the construction like pro people will be on site and I guess I'll be working with them helping I don't know but um, we're gonna, it, tomorrow, the stable needs to be ready for concrete. So the concrete comes the next morning and there's no messing around. It's something about like concrete, you can't cancel it or be like, ah, oh, never mind, or oh, I ran a day late. Like the concrete comes, that thing's gonna dry. You're gonna pay for it. So tomorrow, gotta have concrete ready. So I think I'm gonna, you know, put a, put a period on the end of this day in the life right now. And uh, you can just know that what I'm doing now for my day in the life is editing the video that you're watching. So I hope you guys enjoyed it. I've enjoyed making these things. So we'll do more. Oh, and if you're still here, click like. If you made it this far, I totally deserve your like. Whoa. Everyone who makes it this far should be, I would like that. Okay, Colin's playing his game. Watch what happens. No. What then you do it? <laughs> Just play. Okay. Five. No, how much? <laughs> Whoa. This is not good. All night. I keep losing. <laughs> All Why night. Did I lose it? <laughs> He's so loud. <laughs>